In this segment, we're going to discuss the implications of Green's theorem for work integrals. In general, recall that the work performed by a field F on a particle moving along a curve C is given by the integral over C of F dot dr, or that's equal to the integral over C of F of x, y, dx plus g of x, y, dy. Well, Green's theorem in the case that C is a simple closed curve and you know all of the conditions are green, of Green's theorem are satisfied tells us that we can then rewrite this integral as the double integral over R of the partial derivative of G with respect to X minus the partial derivative of F with respect to Y. So we'll be using this um, formula, Green's theorem, to evaluate uh, the work performed by a vector field. I'd also like to mention a special case that occurs. Actually, this occurred in um, the last video segment. Um, and what it was is we had a vector field F that was conservative, which means that F is independent of path. Remember what that means is that the work done by the vector field on a particle um, only depends on where the particle started and where it ends not what path it takes to get in between. And so we have the fundamental theorem of line integrals which tells us that to find this integral we simply subtract the value of phi, which remember here the uh, gradient of um, phi is f. So um, we subtract phi at the ending point minus phi at the starting point and we get the value of the integral. Now we also learned that when c is a closed curve this is going to necessarily mean that the end point is the same as the starting point and so when we subtract them we get zero. Now let's think about how that um, goes along with Green's theorem. So remember Green's theorem told us that the work is equal to this expression. But we also know that in the special case that F is conservative, According to theorem 16.3.3, the test for a conservative field, this means that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of g with respect to x. And so if our integral of our vector field over a closed curve C, remember that's what this circle indicates, C is closed, um, is equal to the double integral over r of the difference between these two partials but they're the same then we get the integral of zero as we did in that previous example and the result is zero. In the next example we're going to look at a more general case where we don't end up with a um, zero in the integrand because we're not looking at a conservative vector field. In this example, we're asked to use Green's theorem to find the work done by the force field F on a particle that moves along the stated path. The force field that we're given is F of xy equals square root of yi plus square root of xj. The curve C is the boundary of the region R enclosed by y equals 0, x equals 2, y equals x cubed over 4. Now let's write down Green's theorem so that we know what we're supposed to be doing. So here's our new version of Green's theorem for vector fields and um, in particular we want to keep in the back of our minds um, the conditions for our region R and our curve C. We need R to be a simply connected plane region whose boundary C is a simple closed piecewise smooth curve. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and find dg dx and df dy. So this is our f. f of x, y in this case is the square root of y or y to the one half. So the partial derivative of f with respect to y is going to be one half y to the negative one half or 1 over 2 square roots of y. g of x, y in this case is the square root of x or x to the 1 half. So the partial of g with respect to x 
is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half or 1 over 2 square roots of x. So those are the two partials that we need. Now let's talk about the region R. The region R again is enclosed by y equals 0, x equals 2, and y equals x cubed over 4. Let's stop for a second and draw a picture of that. Okay, so here we have a graph of our boundary y equals 0, x equals 2, and y equals x cubed over 4. Everything up until this point works out well for applying Green's theorem. But there is one more condition that we need to think about. And that is that our f of x, y, and g of x, y have to be continuous and have continuous first order partials on the region R. Well, these are certainly continuous on the region R because we can take the square root of any positive numbers that we like. So we're in good shape there. But we do have a problem here. Notice that 0, 0 is in our region R and we don't have continuity there. So technically, Green's theorem doesn't apply. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of skirt around that in a way using a limit. Let's consider almost the same region, except instead of extending all the way to the point 0, 0, we're going to let our region extend just to x naught 0, some positive value x naught between 0 and 2. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our integral over this curve, and then, or this region, which I'm going to call r sub x naught. And then we're going to um, take the limit of that integral as x naught approaches 0. So basically we've created a new region which does satisfy Green's theorem. We're going to integrate over that and then use a limit to get it as close as we can to 0, 0. So setting up our integral, we're going to have the double integral over r sub x naught of delta g, or I should say the partial of g with respect to x, minus the partial of f with respect to y, dA. And that's going to give us the integral over r sub x naught of, well, I'm going to leave these in their exponent form, so we're going to have 1 half um, x to the negative 1 half minus 1 half y to the negative 1 half dA. Now let's think about our bounds. So instead of having our double um, integral over region r, we're going to change to an iterated double integral. In the iterated double integral, we have x values going from x naught up to 2. And we have y values going from y equals 0 up to y equals x cubed over 4. Now remember we always want to have our constant bounds on the outside and even though it doesn't look like it, x naught is a constant. Um, we're treating it as a constant for the purpose of this sketch here, this region, and then we'll take the limit as x naught goes to zero at the end. Integrate, or not integrating, but filling in our integrand. We have, remember these are y values, so we're doing dy first and then dx. Okay, so adding one to the, uh, well actually we're integrating with respect to y, so the first term, and, and actually I'm going to bring the one half out front here. So we have one half the integral from x naught to 2. So I'm just integrating x to the negative one half, treating it as a constant, then we're going to get x to the negative one half y minus y to the negative one-half with respect to y is going to give us 2y to the one-half. And this is evaluated from y equals 0 to y equals x cubed over 4. 
dx. After plugging in x cubed over 4 and 0, we're going to have x to the 5 halves over 4 minus x to the 3 halves. Now we're going to integrate that with respect to x. This gives us 1 14th x to the 7 halves minus 2 fifths x to the 5 halves, which we now need to evaluate from x naught to 2. Okay, so what I've done here is I've factored out x to the 1 half to leave these integer powers here, and that gives me 1 half x to the 1 half times the quantity 1 14th x cubed minus 2 fifths x squared from x naught to 2. Now plugging in x naught and 2, 2 first, we get this minus this. Now again, this represents the value of the integral over rx naught, but if we take the limit as x naught approaches 0 of this, then all of this is going to go to 0 and we're going to be left with this side, which simplifies to negative 18 root 2 over 35. 